My name is Kamara Thomas. I'm a singer-songwriter who just moved to Durham about a year and a half ago from Brooklyn. country soul or country soul Americana <laughs> I don't know but there's it you know it definitely leans toward country and Americana but it's got kind of a soul black person element to it as well so it's not just like you know country <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I started out just wanting to be an artist, you know, and, and didn't really know if I would, that I was a songwriter until pretty much after college. Like in, in college, I did a lot of theater, which I've kind of come back to now, but, you know, I always thought I'd be an actress, and, um, and but really I just always wanted to be an artist when I was a kid. Broken and staring at walls like a coward but I'd rather be kissing my pillow than having the battle of Shiloh again with you what I think I figured You're out was that I just needed to cultivate what I call a poetic sensibility that it wasn't like for some people it comes really naturally to look at the world and it be this magical thing and that wasn't necessarily <laughs> how I looked at the world <laughs> um, growing up. You know. My process of where I, you know, the process that kind of brought me to where I am now is um, pretty much a, a low threshold for pain and suffering. <laughs> I've always had a very low threshold for pain <laughs> and so I've always wanted relief. <laughs> Um, and always, you know, I'm like, how do I find relief? How do I find relief? Um, and so in that, you know, as I cultivated that poetic sense, I also, I guess the only word for it is I, I really wanted healing. I wanted to, I wanted to heal. Songwriting for me was the place where it, where it all kind of clicked and I felt like I could describe the world poetically in song. Lord, between your Roman and my toxic tongue But I could plunder the lark in her bevy For feathers of second-hand sincerity So if the shiny shoes are too fragile It's a road that requires stamina and requires, like, picking yourself up and being like, well, I'm not going to stop being an artist or stop trying to create what I want to create just because I didn't, because things didn't happen the way I wanted them to happen, right? And we're like, you know, if you're in a three-piece rock band and you're rocking out like Led Zeppelin, like, and things are happening, we were like, all right, let's go. We're about to be huge, rich, famous, let's do it, you know? And then when it doesn't happen, and not to say that we didn't have, you know, my band Earl Greyhound, we, we had a really good level of success for like an indie band that um, at the time that we kind of came out and music business was changing and all this stuff, we, we, had, we had success. nice feeling that comes over you when your album comes out and like you get the good reviews there's nothing better than that and but it wasn't for us in line with like the mythology of what we were 
factor. And so, you know, there's disappointment that goes along with that when it doesn't, when what you thought was supposed to happen doesn't happen. And uh, so, you know, in retrospect, it was a hard time when, when I finally decided to walk away from, you know, when we decided to go on hiatus, it was like, all right, this dream that we had, it's probably not gonna happen or it's not gonna happen the way we think it's gonna happen. Time to walk away. Um, it took me a little while to like deal with the disappointment of that. But in retrospect, now I'm like, oh wow, like that was a great artistic um, metamorphosis, you know, and that part of it, you know, is totally what I'm into, <laughs> you know, and, and now I feel a lot more, um, you know, I feel rebirthed and like really super excited about the art I'm making. I yell you just like me, you only buckle and bruise. Why don't you give up on me like I give up on you? And that's no way to treat your sweet guitar. Mm -hmm.